Good morning. This testing audio. Can everyone hear me? Good morning. Van is here. Van is right here. As always, eating away and often. Hello, folks. How are we doing today? Good morning, good morning. I have not tested anything, but we are... I guess we're just gonna get right into it. Hello, hello. Good to see you again as well. Wowie. I am... Um, I apologize if, if today ends up being a bit scattered. I was just wanting to... And you can probably hear it in the background music, but... Just wanted to revisit favorite game of mine from some years ago. Ah, oh, the music already takes me back. How many of you have played this game? So, it... Well, it's in the title. It's called Katawa Shoujo, which is kind of... Um, I would say the only thing that the game can really be criticized for, if I can be honest. It's one of my... One of my favorites. Um... Never heard of it till you mentioned it. I see. Well, it is... It's reasonably old. Um, it came out... Came out quite a long time ago. Made in, um... Resist the urge to say Renpi and say Renpai, but... It's, a uh, a visual novel. You just romance some girls. But... It's set in a school intended for disabled... Disabled youths. Okay, I'll have a, I'll have a little read. Wowie, it's been a decade. Happy ten years, Katawa Shoujo. So, uh, in the about on the website, it says Katawa Shoujo is a bishoujo-style visual novel set in the fictional Yamaku High School for disabled children, located somewhere in modern Japan. Isao Nakai, a normal boy living a normal life, has his life turned upside down when a congenital heart defect forces him to move to a new school after a long hospitalization. Despite his difficulties, Isao is able to find friends and perhaps love if he plays his cards right. There are five main paths corresponding to the five main female characters, each path following the storyline pertaining to that character. So, <laughs> that's what it's about. Um, there are five main, five main characters. Uh, they're all very lovely. Um, let's shimmy over to. Ah, question. For those of you who do know the game, oops, I think I should move down a bit instead of being small. How's that? Mm. The, it's really, before I get into the game, I think I play it every few years. Um, after it came out, I played it immediately and I I really liked it, but I have the urge to replay it every few years just because I care about it so much. Um, even though the title of the game is a little bit... It refers to the girls in a, a bit of a... A bit of like an old rude sort of way, which is why I think that some people had issues with it. However, um, the game's writing, the structure of the characters, I think they're all quite sensitive 
to everyone's to everyone's situations, their lives. You'll see. <laughs> hello, hello. That's how you know it's a good game. I, I feel exceptionally fondly towards it. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell which one of these characters is my favorite, but the starters, for those of you who know the characters, would you have anyone that you'd like to see me pursue? Winks? Hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome to Katawa Shoujo, which I haven't started yet, but... The game is... Lovingly crafted. The love that went into making this game is what makes me go back to it. I think that they put so much thought into making it happen and to making it right that that was really conveyed. Can we pursue that <laughs> not me? Exciting. Well, I am I am excited. It's been a few years since I last touched this game. So, so naturally I am I'm trying to do my reminiscing now. But I guess we can um can get started and you guys can make that decision a little bit later on maybe we have to interact with all of them first mm. actually we'll even see if we can get that far <laughs> i don't think katawa shoujo is like a short game a light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes oh how is volume will i turn it down a smidge Is it, um, like a palatable level? Can everyone hear and see? Sounds fine. Okay. Excellent. <sighs> this is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4pm. Ah yes, the note slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more of a fan of the letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in the stagnant world. Their slow descent, Upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time has slowed to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. So, you came? Uh, I checked to see if there was a Katawa Shoujo category, but there isn't. So I wasn't sure what else I should use. I've just stayed on just chatting. A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never, never is more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn to face this voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. Yuanako, I got a note telling me to wait here. Was yours? Damn it. I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line and that was the result? Pathetic. I... Yes, I... Asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. 
A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. My heart is pounding now, as if it were trying to burst out from my chest and claim this girl for itself. So, uh, 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 here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. Cacophonous noise is music to my ears. Iwanako flinches ever so softly against the gust of the wind. As it passes, she writes herself, as if supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and, she's, and she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. All the while... The anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word out if I tried. You see... Ducky... I wanted to know... If you'd go out with me... I stand there, motionless save for my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. So? I reach up to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. So? Beyond your usual duckies, my whole body freezes save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yavai. Yeah, the beating in my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, you and Oka running toward me, all these fade to black. The last things I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Ioannako screaming for help and the, assess the incessant clatter of the branches above. Ki Ki By Four Leaves Studios The key. Beautiful. <laughs> you guys call this an old game, but, you know... <laughs> It's been four months since my heart attack. In that whole time, I can probably count the times I've left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months. It's a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts. So I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. Strange word. Foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition. It causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. I play much older games than this, gestures to Dragon Band. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better. More appreciative of my life. 
It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course there isn't a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, and all the get well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I'd gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanako was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't touch the subject, it was between us on that snowy day, ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they're in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but... It makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment and surgeries worked. So I idly observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest, slowly change its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of an omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point, oops, sorry. I stopped watching TV. I don't know why. I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation started reading instead. There was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I'd go back for more. I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. But I loved the stories was what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mess I was trapped inside instead of moving within. The way that this is written is extremely... <laughs> A week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes, I'd pause in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into consciousness. Into my consciousness, through the barrier of nonchalance I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. Hello? But that happened only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. Today, the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he is trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. 
There is this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time sorting his papers and setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he had just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment. Hello, Hisa. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little. I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions you should be fine. We have all your medication sorted out. I'll give your father I'll give your father their prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. Ugh, so many. I take it from his hand and take a look myself, feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? The absurdly long list of medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. Yeah. This is insane. I swear if this was released this year, it'd be an isekai name so he goes on to be a surgeon in another world. <laughs> I'm not sure they'd go on to be a surgeon. Side effects, adverse effects, contraindications and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. Of course they are, you've been taking them every day. I try to read them but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it, attempting to only makes me feel sicker. All this for the rest of my life, every day? I'm afraid that this is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, but I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years. Years? What kind of confidence booster is that? I'd have felt better if you hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please, uh, calm down, Kisa. Uh, listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever of my concern shows, it's ignored. We all understand that your, edu your education is paramount, however, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least, not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So... I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I? It has a 24-hour nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it were really that free, there wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital ne being nearby a selling point. Of course, that's only if you want to go. But your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a, a look a couple weeks back. I think you'd like it. It looks like I don't really have a choice. Compared to other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue education. Good evening. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamned opportunity. Well... You should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to return to school, and while it's not the same one... Special school. That's... An insult. That's what I want to say. The step down. That's not what you think. All of the students there are pretty active. In their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn. They just need a little help. In one way or another. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. I am... 
I am still being a doctor for this for this teenage lad. <clears throat> Your father's right, and many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. That's what a disability is. I really hate that something so important was decided for me. But what can I do about it? That normal life is out of the question now. It's funny. I'd always thought that my life was actually kind of boring, but now I miss it. Well, Kitty, you're so jaded. <clears throat> I want to protest. I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now, something about how I can go back to school anyway, but... No. I don't say anything. The fact is that I know it. Now it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school? What are those even like? Much as I try to put a positive spin on this. Very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That's all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something. Even if it's a special school, it's something. It's a fresh start, and my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. That's the spirit. Sorry, I spent half an hour just reading the prologue. Don't think, don't think we'll be able to get onto romancing anyone today. <laughs> the gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Red bricks, black wrought iron and grey plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like couldn't really decide. Probably no. <laughs> well, take care. Look if you must. Don't worry, I'm just... playing a thing. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. It does. So I walked toward the main building of Yamako Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone, as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have, more like a park, with a clean walkway going past trees, and the smell of fresh cra- uh, Sorry, I've been stumbling over my words today. Crimes. And the smell of fresh cut grass and all the other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind makes me shudder. I shake them off. Stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies, too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley. Even though I was told this is my new school, in the back of my head, it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. I end it eerie. It makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again, how they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a calming color. That's not true. 
But why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no life I could return to. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous, and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. You must be ni uh, Nikki? Nakai. Ah, uh, so you are. Uh, excellent. I'm your homeroom and science teacher. My name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. The head nurse asked you for a brief check-in, does it? There's no time for that now. Oh, uh, should I go later? Yeah, it's afternoon, it's probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? What are we doing, guys? Are we, um... Uh... Best foot forward? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's... Let's introduce ourselves. Yeah... Yeah, sure. I mean, isn't that normal? Uh, of course. But not everyone likes to be at the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Mm, right. But it's no problem. I'm single and ready to mingle. <laughs> That's definitely one sort of fresh start, Holly. Uh, let's go then. My heart is pounding in my chest and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow, st follow the teacher up the stairs. <laughs> the third door down, the third floor corridor is marked as, as the classroom for class 3-3. Muto opens the door and enters. Mm, good morning everyone, sorry I'm late again. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Get a grip. This is a big step. I know that. But there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this soon. I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around. Partially so that I partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. It's pretty spacious. The ceiling is unusually high. And there's lots of space left over around and in between the desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high, old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath the books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal like students in any other school. But then why would they be here? They're probably like me, and have something wrong with them, only it's just not immediately obvious. Then, I notice that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little jarring. Despite the natural tendency to listen to- listen when someone's talking about you. I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long, straight hair that is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands as if it will make her invisible. I can't speak! Invisible! What am I saying? Done it. That person in the back is really... It sure is... Sure is early to be dozing. 
There is one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers at me over the rims of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. It's kind of cute. So is the cheery looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. She is really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her at the moment I walked in. Mm, please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands, and so does everyone else, except one girl in the first row who only has who has only one hand. I cringe a little, but I hide it by bowing in thanks for the applause I did not deserve. A collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. Oh, so I'm Isao Nakai. And after that? My hobbies are reading and soccer. I hope to get along well with everyone, even though I am a new student. And after that? <sighs> I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. I should say something more, something more exciting. I end up saying nothing, and the teacher picks up from there. Everyone seems to be satisfied with, even with what little I said. The, a few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. It could have gone worse. I listen to the teacher as he drones about get it, getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. The first for a girl claps on this round with her one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandage stump. It makes me feel a little bad. Well, we are going to be doing some group work today, so that'll give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine with me. That's good, you can work with Hakamichi. She is the class representative. She can explain anything that you might want to know. And who else would be able to do that better, right? How could I know? The teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces that we'll be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know who Hakamichi is. Lo. The teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Oh, oh right. Oh, Hakamichi is right there. She's in there, Hakamichi. As he calls out her name, the cute, bubbly-looking girl with bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a seat next to her, by the window. Uh, hey, I guess you're Hakamichi, right? It's nice to meet you. <laughs> what? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. It's nice to meet you too, but... I'm not Hakamichi, I'm Misha. This is Hakamichi. Shichan! Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her, the one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she had been staring at me this whole time. She nods once, nonchalantly, to show that she acknowledges my presence, but only barely. She has short, yet carefully neatly brushed hair, a pair of oval-shaped glasses balanced on the tip of a dainty nose, and dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and slightly bored. It's nice to meet you. Dot dot dot. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. Akamichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. Start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me, saying things like you'll be able to talk to people, and who better to explain things to you. Mm, I can see you're a little confused, right? Right? <laughs> but I understand why you'd think I was Shichan. Shichan is deaf, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter. She said it's nice to meet you too. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Shichan, of course he is. Well, if he wasn't, he would have been... <laughs> he would have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right. He seems like a very interesting person, doesn't he? We knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today. So soon. Ichan, right? Ichan? Yep. 
It fits, doesn't it? Should I say it out loud? Uh, it's just a surprise. I've never liked that nickname. I don't really see how. It fits. You look just like I imagined. <laughs> yeah, you look just like a Hichan. I wonder why everyone seems to think so. How come you taps her fingers on the desk to get Misha's attention? They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly, their hands a blur. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry about that. Shichan wants you to know that she's the class rep, so if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Do you like the school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and f familiarize yourself with it. Misha stumbles with the hard word a bit, making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Mmm, thanks. That would be pretty helpful. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of came straight to class today. <laughs> That's no good. You should always try to learn as much as you can about where you're going before you go there. Not just with school either. Always. Even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, Shichan? <laughs> Learn about where you're going? I guess I didn't bother to do that, but just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this. Even if I committed even if I committed myself to going along with it half assedly, but anyway. I don't say anything. And Misha signed something that ends in a shrug. <laughs> what was that? seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over in my seat. But both of them are smiling, but that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. You look down. Are you okay? Uh, don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate it when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things by asking. Asking for help is perfectly normal as much as needing help. Stop looking like you just failed a test. <laughs> uh, Alright. Hey yo! Ah, and another thing. You don't have to call Shichan something so formal like Hakamichi or class rep all the time. Just call her Shichan. <laughs> okay, maybe that's too casual. Maybe Shizune would be more appropriate. Yep, yep. She's in there, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, that would be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease. Both of them seem so friendly, so I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier. Especially about she's in there who I assumed would be your business. Thank you for liking my design. Today we are playing Katawa Shoujo, a old favorite. I like these two. I, I'd, I'd like everyone, what am I saying? <clears throat> well, she still seems like that, just less so, I guess. Oh. oh, right, we haven't even touched the assignment. We should start work now or Shichan will get mad. The assignment is also kind of long, so we should start now if you want to finish it before the end of class. <laughs> that too. She's an egg glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language to understand that. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I get the message. Dot dot. After class, we can take a walk around the grounds together. It's a nice day today. Okay? The assignment is actually very challenging to get through, combining aspects of both being difficult and unnecessarily long. Still, we finish it a few minutes earlier than everyone else in the class, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really capable. They're quite different, though. The class rep is as calm and professional as she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish, not to mention a little more easily distracted. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. 
The clock tower bells ring, signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch. Without knowing what else to do, I follow Misha who is beckoning me into the hallway and down the stairs. We descend even below the lobby where I met Muto down to the bottom floor. Just like everything in the school, the cafeteria seems too spacious and oddly modern in contrast to the classic exterior. Its big windows open to the courtyard toward the main gate. It's the cafeteria! Her enthusiastic statement of the obvious makes people around us stare, but Misha doesn't seem to care so we proceed to the line. There is a rather long list of menu options, which seems great until I realize that many of them are to accommodate students who need special diets. How nice. It almost feels like I'm back at the hospital eat eating portions measured with <laughs> eating portions measured with scientific precision to meet the needs of the patients. I pick something at random and follow Shizune to the table, sitting opposite of her. As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention and points to Shizune. I don't understand signs, so the point escapes me. Maybe looking at a person who talks to you is proper and polite? Do you want to know something? What? About anything. We're your guide, so you should ask if there is something. Uh, I wonder. Okay. What are we- okay, I think, um... Hmm. Does anyone have a request? Because this is where this is where the roots start to branch out. We've only met Shizune and Misha at this point. But for those of you who've played this game, do you have Do you have a request? Well since we've met both Shizune and Misha, should we just continue on with these two? Does Bun have a favorite route? I do. I do have a favorite route. But. But. If anyone had a request for a character they want to go after, character they like a lot, um, I remember in my in my mentions there was there was someone who likes Lily a lot, someone who likes Hanako, neither of whom we've met, but I mean I don't know this game. That's fine. Only for those who know. Only for those who wanted to see. Since we're here with Shizune and Misha. Uh, there's, there's no category for this game. <laughs> there's no category for this game, unfortunately. So. Stop trying to romance. Stop trying to, there's no route. There's no fun route. Okay? There's no fun route here. But since we, <laughs> since we are here, let's ask about Shizune's deafness. Eyeballs you all. Did you check if it's on the band list? Band list? Ah? Eh? C can someone check for me? If I'm not allowed to stream this, I'll I'll turn it off. Prayer hands emoji. Sorry for the... Just listen to this, um... This chatter in the cafeteria in the meantime. Anyway. But I can't really ask about something that's person, Something that personal, can I? Hmm. It's not on the list? Okay, thank you. Maybe, maybe sometime they'll add it to the categories. The thing is, is that Katawa Shoujo is like... As mentioned, it's already 10 years old, so they probably didn't get around to adding it to anything. Mm. 
can't come up with anything else to ask, so I just focus on my food while the girls talk between themselves. Thank you for checking. Thank you for having a look. Misha and Shizune sign back and forth very animatedly, throwing sideway glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they're talking about secret girl stuff or something. Dot dot dot. No, 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 it's okay. I didn't have that thought. The game also can turn off the lewd scenes so I don't see the issue. Well, we won't be seeing any of those while I'm streaming today. <laughs> we won't be seeing any of those. But if you are, if you are concerned about it, hold on. Ta-da! It's disabled. There we go. Yeah, yeah, no, no, they're, they're no time soon. We wouldn't be seeing anything unsuitable for work anytime soon. Wink, wink, nothing that I can show you on stream. Shakes my, shakes my head. I quickly notice a conversation in sign is not enough to fill a silence. Oh, I did not mention that this visual novel is in fact, you know, R18. <laughs> I was too busy thinking about how good it is, but now now you mention it. I think it's because the I think it's because the sex scenes are just kind of so gratuitous that they were forgettable <laughs> forgettable to me. I just didn't care about them enough to remember that there was any. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Of course I've played this. Anyway. We arrive- oh. <laughs> No, it's not a horror game. We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. Um, Katawa Shoujo has a very kind sensor for the lewd scenes. That dark-haired girl I noticed before is slumped over her desk in the last row. This is another one of our poor thing. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of a rhino. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she was slowly turning into stone just from our presence. Misha and Shizuna either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students and finally, the teacher. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. Shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Maybe it's a long time and spent in the hospital that made me like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Beside me, Misha and Shizuna are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today, Hichan. We've got to hurry already since there is a lot of work for us to do. You'll find your way around here, I'm sure of it. Oh, oh wait. Uh, the teacher said I'd have to see the nurse. Where do I have to go? Ah, is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on. The nurses have their own building, so we have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell and outside, with the girls pointing out other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the school. It's built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually a part of the main building. This is the auxiliary building here. There is a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Yamaku Foundation office and all the nurses' offices. They even have a swimming pool. Ugh, what was that official? Don't be silly, Hichan. It's for physical therapy, of course. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there too. The head nurse's office is on the first floor. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Oh, 
Iya. Thanks. Bye. A whole building with stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education? I guess it's necessary for a place like this. I walk in, hoping that this really will be only a quick visit like the teacher said. On a white door in the lift is a green cross with the text Head Nurse and a nameplate. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. The room is not large and it smells strange. A friendly looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy, but the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils and there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. Uh. Hello there, what can I do for you today? He is young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheeks wash that impression away when he smiles. Um, are you the nurse? He smiles like a person who has heard this very same question hundreds of times. Why, yes I am, it says on the door, no? You can call me by name or just the nurse like everyone else. Uh, uh, of course. I shake off my confusion, realizing I should probably grab his extended hand. His handshake is rather firm and friendly. Uh, right. I'm a new student, and my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet you. My name is Hisao Nakai. His eyes light up with revelation, and he snaps his fingers. Oh, you're that Nakai. I was just reading your file in the morning. Some kind of chronic arrhythmia and related congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? He gestures me to sit down in a vacant armchair in front of his desk. <laughs> Your anticipation for the hot nurse has been shattered. Uh, yes. Mm, good. Well, you've probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone from my staff around even at night, so never hesitate to call us if there is a problem. The famous 24-hour nursing stuff. Well, this is like a hospital. <laughs> well, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. The stroke feels so out of place that I'm left thinking why he even said it. Uh, yeah. Just that it's really weird to have so many, many medical people at a school. You'll get used to it. I'm not so sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Mm, now, let me just find your file again. While he searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of papers around, I let my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome of generic, I'd like to say. Beige walls and ceiling, dark grey laminate flooring, and all the equipment you'd expect from a school nurse's office. Even the ridiculous educational posters are hanging on all four walls, reminding me to eat properly three times a day and from all the food groups. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. So, you already have medication for the arrhythmia, just remember to take your pills every morning and evening or it won't much be much, or it won't be much help. Uh, apart from that, do you do any sports? Rash stuff like, I don't know, boxing? He grins to his own joke, but I don't. Uh, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. Uh, all right. I'm afraid I'm going to have to recommend you refrain from doing that, at least for the time being. Uh, oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow, but really I'm not too bothered by him for forbidding me to kick a ball around. I guess I never did it out of burning passion for the sport, just to have something to do. Any kind of concussion might be very dangerous to your heart, and risking another attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion to the chest area? There's no mention of the cause in your papers. Uh, not exactly. 
I sidestep the question acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face. Mm. Still, you need to keep your body healthy, so some exercise would do you good. We have physical therapy and such available as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk walks or even light jogging, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Uh, swimming maybe? There's a pool here. So I was told. Ah, uh, you were? Very good. At any rate, and I'm sure you've been told this before, you just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. No, really. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one more time, and sets them on the desk, obviously content. Mm, good. That's it then. Come meet me if you ever need something. I'm ushered out before I even realize it. A quick visit indeed. Not a doctor, just a nurse. Just kidding. He is a head nurse, so like a charge nurse, I would say. I don't think that he would... I don't think that he would be any less reliable. Nurses are important. Be good to your nurses. They don't get paid enough. <laughs> I end up standing in front of the main building and the auxiliary building, although to my eyes they still look one and the same. It's the first real look I get at the other students, though I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they're going. And I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Does it make me one of them? W one of us? I should go somewhere too, to prevent me from getting lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The wariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorms, set a little way apart from the main building complex. There is a garden of sorts between the school and the dorms, rubbery flowers and that overbearing smell of fresh cut- <laughs> fresh- What's wrong with me today? Fresh cut grass that fills the atmosphere. It dawns on my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. The dorm building is big and made of red brick. Check out that mural! It's in the works. Like the others, it feels way too pompous for what it is, so I push forward going inside. It takes more time than necessary, to fish out the key I was given from my fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Yes, you have to touch grass in a place like not in a place like this, but good grass. Room one one nine. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is fairly new, functional, and boring. Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the end of the hallways. I poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside a few students are watching the television. I'm... I've reverted back to a child that can't read aloud. There's a difference. There's a difference between reading things in your head and saying it aloud, okay? I'm... words... Words are not coming out of my... coming out of my mouth. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. It's more like my mouth is very tired. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is very... slow in making these movements. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems that only the girls around here are sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. Don't worry, but we can't read either. No, no, I'm sure you can. It's just that. Mm, wiggles my mouth. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small corridors branch off from the main hallway. 
Each of these minor halls seems to have a toilet and shower as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall I spy room 119. The nameplates on the rooms adjacent to mine are blank. I guess there are just two of us here. The light shines from before, from below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. Uh, hello, is anyone home? From inside, I hear a few movements and the clicking of way more locks than I thought these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. A respectable... <laughs> <laughs> a bespectacled boy is standing in the doorway. He's looking at me very intently through his extremely thick eyeglasses. Who is it? Blind? No, at least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? <laughs> when did Harry Potter join the game? He leans closer to me until our noses are almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. He, I'm moving into the next room. I thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realization, and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in a smiling greeting, almost straight to my diaphragm. <laughs> oh, sup, dude? The name's Kenji. Ah. Uh... Hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it, still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and vehement welcome. There were some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. Uh, it was probably my parents. Mm, your parents? You sure? Because they could have been some other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. His out-of-place proverb is left hanging between us awkwardly as I try to think of some way to respond. I'd say the chances are high enough. <sighs> he shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, he's all. Me, I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Damn. You're smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Uh, never mind. Doesn't matter. With that, he turns... Fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the door marked 119. Bleak beige walls, white linen, a desk made of some type of light wood, ugly curtains. It's no one's room, impersonal, like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting at the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems that there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well. A note is pinned to the sleeve of one of the shirts. <laughs> Hi, Hitan. We've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said that if these don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mum and Dad. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. I kind of hoped I would have, then there would be something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop and lie down on the bed feeling drained. Lying there makes me want to read something, but I have nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me for wanting to read whenever I have nothing to do. The restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about about it before coming, and for the entire day today too. Still am, I think. Damn. I have to distract myself somehow, so I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow, I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah. I'll do that. But for now, 
The bottles of medications neatly arranged on my, my, on my night table catch my eye. I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside and then read the glued on pharmacy label. <laughs> Isao Nakai. Two tablets daily to stay alive. It doesn't really say that, but it could just as well. It's kind of twisted having your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? With a sigh, I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain. And after that, I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. It doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly more comfortable, warm and nest-like against the chill that passes through room temperature here. Soon, the lighter shade of darkness that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night, and it becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. The night beckons me to sleep, and I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew. I wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light grey ceiling. I'd forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. This is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that indeed, it's me who is supposed to be the one living here. My bags on the floor, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating until I open a bottle, shake out a pill and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with a chaser of water without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the chi from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good one. A natural one. It feels like a school uniform, as it should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday, Misha's constant laughter, and Shizune's sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal, but I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them are what passes for normal around here? Yeah. What does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after classes yesterday, so maybe there are clubs? If so, I wonder if I should join one. All through class, the question remains on my mind, but I decide to ask Shizune about it when we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. She crosses her arms and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so that the top is perfect and evenly flat. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Shichan. Is there something you wanted from me? Oh, I see. Mm, that's a good question, Shichan. My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative? Well, anyway, Misha, please don't prove me right. Dot, dot, dot. I always wonder what I should say for Shizune because, um, this should be quite obvious by now, but Shizune can't speak. 
And so there's no voice for me to give her. <laughs> there's no voice for me to give her when she's... When she's... Emoting with... Periods. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. There are also school events like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. Just take a small break in talking, this is true. I am doing a lot of talking. Ugh. I vote for uwu instead of dot dot. Ooh. What? <laughs> whenever, whenever she's in his triple dots, her ellipses comes up. I, I always feel tempted to just like, hmm, with the appropriate emotion. <laughs> Mm. 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 <laughs> I don't think that'll cut it. <laughs> so, you actually transferred in at a, at a busy time. Maybe you can help out too. Uh, sure. What's the festival about? Misha freezes. I don't know, Hichan. The truth is, it's a local event, and I'm not from this area, so... She starts signing desperately to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune, uh, <laughs> Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grand grandest flourish, and starts signing hard and heavy. No, ooh, there's no ooh. Oh, ah, uh, who cares? Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune's words out at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud. I can see heads turning to look in our direction. N not so loud. Human beings evolve with each new generation. The ideals and beliefs behind a festival will inevitably change with time. Now it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. <laughs> the teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Finally, noticing where we are, Misha stifles a yelp and quickly quiets down. Chizune doesn't seem embarrassed at all, though, brushing it off without a care. We're in the middle of class and should start working. That's right, Chichan. What? That's right. Chichan, are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchange between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that every other word anyway. I... Uh, yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Shizune look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flutters in my peripheral vision, catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl with long dark hair get up from her desk and slip silently towards the door. It doesn't seem like she is working in any group, and no one seems to notice her but me. I glance at the teacher who's also looking at the dark-haired girl go. Why doesn't he say anything? Hichan? Is something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me looking after the girl who left? Uh, no, nothing. Okay, well, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I would go to the library and pick up some books. Uh, not really. Do you want to have lunch together then? Uh, sure. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Heat chunk. Perfect. The rest of class passes uneventfully. The girl with the long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. Isn't it looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish all our work on time. I'm just glad we finished it at all. It's not a contest or anything. Yes, it is, Hee-chan. Uh, impossible. Really? Really. I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but what anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be so. Are you guys ooing in chat? Stop ooing. <laughs> so ooing. It must be so she's and I can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune? I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing. But really... Shizune can't hear me, but it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. Then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, at least she's looking at me. This is all very confusing and will take some time to get used to. It's not a contest, because contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize on the line, it's not really a contest. She's in there's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. He stares at me as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. I never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring gaze. Are you sure he tongue? Uh, very sure. <laughs> You're wrong, Hee-chan, because I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence in my abilities, and the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. <laughs> She's in it. Pushes up. Pushes her glasses up, the bridge of her nose in a very matter-of-fact way. I'd argue more, but the bell rings, and she quickly gets up and packs her bag, looking at me expectantly. I'd almost forgotten that I was supposed to have lunch with them. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria? <laughs> That's so plain. Okay, let's go. Plain? Uh, well, I guess... At my old school, I liked to eat outside near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it until near the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there is a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to imply as much. Shizune and Misha pull me toward the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favor eating in classroom or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had box lunches. After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. So, Hita, you wanted to know about clubs and stuff, right? Right. Right, Hita. Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again, and Misha straightens her posture as if she is about to deliver a speech. Hita. Do you have anything you're really interested in? Uh, I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just read a lot. Hmm. There is a book club, right, Shichan? Right. But it seems like they have all the members they possibly they can possibly have right now. Sorry, Shichan, it's a really popular club. Ah, okay, but more to the point. Hichan, does this mean that you don't have anything already in mind? Not really. Good, great, that's great, Hichan. Really great. <laughs> Why is it so great? No reason. Well, Hichan, 
Other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there is one other thing. Student council! I see. I didn't know the school had a student council. It was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me that. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this, because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it, and Misha is laughing. Shizune quickly retakes control of the discussion in a manner of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has to voice whatever she says. <laughs> right, right. Hitchan, maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Why? Well, for one, we could hang out every day. Hitchan. Hitchan and I are both in the student council. Actually, Chichan is the president. Oh. <laughs> Welcome, Raiders. Why? You, me. <laughs> Cursed root letter. Hello, hello. Welcome from root letter. We are playing a different visual novel, one of my favorites. <laughs> Oh, welcome to Apocalypse. No, 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 you don't have to follow me, but welcome if you do. We are doing nothing in particular, which is what I do all the time. <clears throat> it was so cute. You like Katawa Shoujo? I very like this game. I'm glad to... I'm glad to see that a lot of you have played it. I honestly expected... I expected some of you to be like... Um, this this is a bit too old for my taste, which is <laughs> wipes dingle tear. It is it's fantastic. Anyway, <clears throat> I haven't read Root Letter, but I really like the writing in Katawa Shoujo. Hmm, I'm starting to get the suspicion that Shizune and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this book. Root Letter is awful? Was it that bad? Please spare yourself from Root Letter? It... But it looked so interesting. <laughs> As if reading my mind, Shizune quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. <laughs> of course, we're not trying to get you to just join because we would obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you too. So, you're admitting that? Uh, 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 no, we admit nothing. I mean, Hichan, of course, it would be nice if you joined and we'd appreciate it. But even without all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one school. Oh, Tensei, another thank you for the bun half stream. Sorry, I... For some reason, I don't have my alerts. Is it in? For some reason, my alerts aren't working today. But, thank you for, um... Thank you for the raid, hear me. I'm so sorry to hear that root letter wasn't very good. Um... Oh dear. Oh. Oh dear. I'm sorry, I was there for- I was there for some of the early parts, but it, it didn't- I didn't hang around to see how- how badly it panned out. Anyway. Um, bun huffs. Uh, this is the kind of huff that I think she's no good huff, but... Thank you for the bungee quarter redeem, Jack. The art and music were great. Well, I'm glad that something about the game was great. <laughs> oh, Black Ace is here. Um, aren't you the aren't you the Lily or she? Here in. <laughs> That's good. Mm. Have a sip of water. My mouth is very tired today. <clears throat> it is very it's very slow. You're a, you're a Lily Oshi, but when I was asking earlier, no one had any requests, so I've just hopped onto Shizune's route since we met her first. But if you do stick around, perhaps, um, 
Perhaps we can get through to reading uh, the lily root. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for coming along and hanging out. We're just uh, spending a little time with um, Shizune, who is... She is deaf mute. And then Misha is her interpreter. They have very different personalities. And they're very charming. I'll have some more water. <laughs> thank you, Mario. Yep, it's true, Hitan. Besides, don't you want to spend time with us after school, Hitan? I can't tell if she is being genuine or if this is just really good acting. Both of them seem to be trying hard to look their cutest, although they are already pretty cute to begin with. Why do you, why do you guys keep trying to choose the bun route? This isn't a bun game. I'm not in this game. I'm the main character in this game. Oh, Jack, good night. Oh. Whoa. So it's settled then. Welcome to the student council, Hichan. What? Uh, no. Uh, no. Oh. See, Hichan. Of course, it wouldn't go so easily. That's right, though. It would be boring if it went that smoothly. Oh well. Chichan owes me candy now. You are betting on it? Hey, my life is not a game here. Chizune seems very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. So in the game, girls get to possibly go on the bun route? That's right. Um, I'm the main character. When this girl came to confess to me, um, I had a heart attack. And then four months later, I had to change schools. And then now I am here. <laughs> My life isn't a game. Rich blonde girls, the Ojo-samas. Lily is extremely... Ojo-sama. Mm. Oh, you haven't done the Shizune route. Well, they're kind of... Well, those two are two sides of the two sides of the coin, right? They have um they have some issues with each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting, Hichan. Let's play a game. Uh, that's not what I said. How about rich man, poor man, Hichan? If you lose, you have to join the student council. No, absolutely not. Oh, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join the student council, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that isn't my goal. But what this means is that both of you can team up and I'll be at a clear disadvantage, so I will have to decline. Hichan, I'm very offended. Are you saying you don't trust us? That we would pull something so dis... in... genuous? That makes me sad. S sorry? It's hard to tell where Shizune's influence ends and Misha's thoughts begin. In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. No! How about a game of paper football instead of rich man, poor man? Paper football? Yeah, it's a game they play in America. You make a paper triangle and then you try to shoot it past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people he done. And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, he <laughs> That means it's a game that really separates the boys from the men. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I am not going to play that either. Just the fact that you know about it means you're probably surprisingly good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. How did you know, Hichan? Shizune frowns at Misha, telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. They wouldn't say that I'm happy with their attempts to get me into the student council, but I'm a little curious about what the student council does here. 
I've never been on one before, or even known anybody who was a member, so it interests me. I also kind of like Shizuna and Misha, so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Mm, okay, Kitan. How about Risk? The game of world domination. Uh, I don't know what that is. <gasps> it's really fun, Kitan. You fight for control of the world, with armies and everything. Sounds like Shizuna would be good at it. If you want to play, we can after school. Oh, really, Shichan? Oh, well, we can just... We can play just for fun, Shichan. Shichan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there are no strings attached. Hmm, well, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. We'll see you after school in the student council room then, Shichan. Oh, wait. Why there? Because... That's where we keep the game. <laughs> I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this. But it's more for show than anything. Though in the end, I agree, but only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete just by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. Lunch ends and we go back to class. During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. After school, Shizuna and Misha quickly find me by the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I feel a little offended, but I'd been considering it. Nevertheless, I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a break for it in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? This doesn't make me feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to his cell. <laughs> What's wrong, Yichan? That's right, we're just going to go play a game of brisk, remember? I don't know, Misha, this all seems a little sinister to me. I start thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torture me until I agree to join the student council. Well, that's highly unlikely, but still. For some reason, it just seems like it would be so plausible. Getting to the student council room is as simple as turning two corners from where we started. What? That's it? This makes you guys being so on top of me seem a little silly. That's not true, Hichan. Chichan says that when their life is threatened, people have shown the capability to pull up <laughs> to, pull, to pull up superhuman bursts of speed. Life is threatened? Her expression unchanging, Misha signs something amusedly to Shizune who makes a baffling face and puts her hands behind her back, looking pleased with herself. <laughs> Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that, I know you heard me. You have no excuse, unlike Shizune. Shizuna opens the door to the student council room. It's a, ver it's a very plain, sparsely decorated room, although it's quite large, maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the center surrounded by chairs, and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back that I assume is Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the table and chairs, the room doesn't have much else to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets and bookshelves stacked with old-school records and documents. Not much else. In fact, nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. They could have at least put a potted plant in here or something. But the most noticeable thing that this room doesn't have is other people. Uh, are we early? No. What do you mean, no? Uh, does it mean nobody else is coming today? 
Yeah, that's right. Before I manage to ask why that's the case, Shizune claps her hands together very energetically. Kichan, let's play Risk. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We can explain to you while we set everything up. While Misha is talking, Shizuna takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. After Misha spends a little too long for her liking running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing tutorial, Shizune cuts in and declares the game has started with a decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more competitive than I intended to be when I agree to do this. Halfway into the game, while I try to ponder how to defend against Shizune's assault from two fronts, she breaks my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Kichan! Shichan wants you to know that you are taking too long to make a move. Shichan also says that she will let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council. I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact that she would dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no. Shichan admires your fighting spirit and would be a benevolent dictator who will spare your people if you agree to join the student council. <laughs> You're so competitive, she's an air. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more magnanimous. Magnanimous? She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who returns, signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index fingers against her temples, as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Suddenly, Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of a heated signing. Oh, wait, please slow down, Shichan. Um, Shichan. Shichan says you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her world empire with my rebellion. Oh, okay. Those eyes of hers shine with childlike mischief. She says, you have no chance if you keep playing like this. No, you won't. <laughs> um I'm I'm on the I'm on the Shizune path, so we're going to fight fire with fire. She is either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose though, so I might as well try something different. Maybe if I spread out my forces and try to control more territories, I can recoup the advantage. Shizune seems to focus on conquering whole nations, so maybe I can sacrifice my hold on continents to gain more small countries. It's worth a shot. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyway. Shizune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows her to tentatively pump a fist in the air in celebration. I win, I win, yay! There's no need to translate that. It was pretty clear. <laughs> Don't look so sad, Hichan. You're really giving it your best. That's what I thought. Sometimes your best just isn't good enough, though. If anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for someone who just learned how to play today. Ichan, you attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very daring move. Shichan is impressed. The mark of great people is that they are daring and that they can follow through. You're already halfway there. Isn't that great, Hichan? That isn't enough, though. Because potential isn't enough. There's no point to potential if you don't take the first step. And there is no point to that if you don't keep going. 
I want to see more. You're right, Shichan, but that's so demanding. <sighs> Shizune leans forward, suddenly looking a lot less playful and more like the serious person I expected her to be from the start. Shichan, would you like to join the student council? She really doesn't waste any time, does she? But... It's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing to something so early. I haven't even taken a look at any other clubs yet. But spending time with Shizne and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I still need more time to think about it before I decide for sure. Maybe. I'll get back to you on it. Okay, Hichang. But I hope you're not just saying that so we don't feel bad. No, uh, really. Really? Hichang, if you're going to say that, you're saying that it's definitely the truth and there can't be any mistaking it. I know, I know. I guess I should have my revenge for losing at the very least. She's an S smiles at that. In the mischievous way that feels sorry that I didn't say that right, mischievous way that feels like twisting the knife in the wound of my loss. I can't words today. I can't English today. Weeps. <clears throat> I take a glance at the clock on the wall and realize I've spent far longer playing brisk than I expected. Oh, sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Shizuna scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be to determine whether the library is open? There is a clock right there on the wall. Today it's Eriglish. Look! I'm... My mouth is very tired. <laughs> My mouth is tired. My brain is reading the words, but it's not coming out right. This is the problem with everyone who reads aloud. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Shijan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor. Can't miss it. Uh, do you want us to show you where it is? Uh, no thanks. It's okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. One flight of stairs up and I run into problems. The second floor hallway is a carbon copy of the third floor one. Wide, of course, and plain, like only hallways can be. The problem is that the library's whereabouts are not as easily determined as one would think. The classrooms are marked with the sign stating which class they belong to, but then there is a plethora of other unmarked rooms. Is the library one of them? Or is it just somewhere down the hallway? I bet on the latter and choose my direction at random. After I turn around the corner, an unmarked door draws my attention because it's not closed. It's not open either, though, just barely ajar so that I can see it's open and nothing else. <clears throat> it would make sense for the library door to be invitingly open, and while this one is not quite that, it's good enough. At the very least, it means that someone is inside, and I can ask for directions no matter how embarrassing that is. I gingerly push on the center of the door with my fingertips, every muscle in my arm ready to pull back at a moment's notice. The feeling of being an outsider to the school can't be shaken from my mind, so much so that I instinctively fear doing something wrong by entering. The door slowly creaks as if groaning from a deep sleep, though it is much easier to open than I had anticipated. Leaning over and poking my head ever further inside, to gain sight of the room as fast as possible, the meek hello on my lips is, qu is quickly snatched away. This is not as I was expecting. I mindlessly let the door open to its full extent, taking in the sight of the solitary figure taking center stage in the otherwise abandoned room. The situation steals my voice, 
leaving you standing at the doorway staring at the beautiful girl. Evidently having taken her time to assess the situation, the girl gingerly <laughs> gently puts down her teacup and opens her eyes but doesn't look at me. <laughs> Hello there. May I help you? Staring directly in front of herself, the movements of her lips seem to break the silence rather than the words. However, it's the soft, measured voice that reminds me she is a being separate from the room itself. Not only is she likely the tallest girl I've ever laid eyes on, but even among the foreigners I've met, she's strikingly distinct. Uh, I... Sorry for intruding, I was just kind of lost. She takes a moment to formulate a response before speaking. Every action she takes feels as if it's carefully choreographed beforehand. Care to take a seat? Unexpected, considering that I'm intruding upon her. Mm. Thanks. I slowly step towards another seat opposite her, the girl resting the teacup and saucer on the wooden table in between. The way she doesn't track my movements with her head is telling that, and the slight cloudiness to her eyes means she must be at least partially blind like Kenji. Come to think of it, her voice doesn't have any detectable accent either. I guess she must be half Japanese. As I take my seat, her composure takes me slightly off guard. Her air of relaxed confidence makes the silence entirely comfortable. The calming atmosphere is so very different from the student council office. I take it you're a new student to Yamaku? Uh, yeah, I just transferred in yesterday. I get the distinct feeling my speech patterns don't match the formality of hers, accentuated by her restrained bow of greeting. One which I hasten to match before realizing the futility of the action. I'm Lily Sato. Pleased to meet you. Hisao. Hisao Nakai. She gives a nod before gesturing roughly in the direction of a teacup. Would you care for a drink? Uh, sure. Much as it pains me, I can't keep step with her formality in the proceedings. She gives a kind nod, taking the request in, in stride. Without another word, she steps off the chair and prepares a second cup of tea from a collection of supplies she laid the uh, supplies laid out along a shelf. A brush here, a brush there. Her left hand often lightly touching the side of whichever container she's pouring into. It seems to be a process she's followed dozens of times before. As I lean sideways to see around her bag, she seems to use her long, dainty finger to measure the right amount of water in the cup. It's one thing to see the different disabilities the students in my class have, but it's quite another to see how everyone seems to adapt. Shizune and Misha have no problem working together to communicate to me, and Lily herself seems to have workarounds for problems I'd never thought of. While I feel slightly guilty about her doing the work, she seems pleased to be following the correct process of the offer of preparing the drink. Sir? Her soft voice brings me out of my silent observance. Uh, which room were you looking for? It's not often this classroom is visited after school. The school library. Shizune and... I mean, uh, some classmates told me it was on this floor. She finishes pouring water into the teacup as she nods, a small metallic tapping coming from the teacup indicating it being stirred. Hmm. I'm aware of Miss Hakamichi as are most students. To be with them means you're in class 3-3, three, three, you know? Oh, uh, that's right. In the science room, with Muto. 
She gives a small giggle before setting down the teaspoon and slowly walking towards the table, teacup and saucer in hand. He's quite a character. I imagine you'll come to like him. Most do. As she sets down the tea, I gently take it and have a sip. I'm really more of a coffee person, but this seems like a rather bad moment to bring it up. Nonetheless, smells quite nice. I hardly think it'd be nice to choke. Ah, shower. I hardly think it'd be hard to choke down. Uh, thanks, Sato. It tastes really nice. She smiles and quickly waves her hand in front of her face. <laughs> Lily, please. There's no need to be too formal. She says this in spite of her exceedingly well-bred speech. Oh well. I guess I should try and ask her about herself. Good night. As it really does seem as if she's catering to me. Uh, so, which class are you from? I imagine it's one of the third year classes? Correct. I'm in class 3 too, which is on the third floor same as yours. It's taught by Miyagi and is specifically for both blind and partially blind students. I see. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry. I feel like slapping myself for the faux pas. Looking at her face, though, she doesn't seem in the least bit put off by it. <laughs> I'm fine. There's no need to change your speech on my account. Uh, sure. Sorry, I guess I'm really showing my newness here. Mm. An environment like this would be a big change, so... Can't fault you for it. Well, the same can't be said for everyone. Many have come to terms with their conditions. A category which would include her, it seems. All too ready to jump ship from this particular topic. I segue into another. Do you come here to drink too often? It's a really nice place. Thinking on it, this might be her version of the place behind my school that I like to have lunch at. I come here fairly often during lunch times. My duties as a class representative don't leave enough time for an official club. So a friend and I use this room for having tea. Class representative, huh? Compared to Shizune, her mannerisms seem to be almost completely opposite. While Shizune is blunt and fiercely driven, Lily seems relaxed and calm, almost aloof. Come to think of it, she might be useful for a less biased view of the school's clubs. Um, what kind of clubs are there to join? Hmm... The more popular ones are the Track and Field Club, which uses the field near the school during lunch times, the Baseball Club, and the Book Club in a room near the library. There are almost numerous. There are also numerous small small ones too, though, such as the Art and Music Clubs. At a time when I'm just wanting to get on my feet. Rushing into a club right away seems slightly unappealing. I wonder if the school shares the same rule as my old one. Is it compulsory to join a club? Mm, it isn't, though it is encouraged. Uh, good. Uh, that's a relief. I've really let down my guard around this girl to let such a thing slip out. The fact seems to slightly amuse her. Not wanting my tea to get cold, I finally start drinking it as Lily does the same. As I look over to the window over her shoulder, I notice the light coming into the room has a, has a distinctly orange tint. Even here, time doesn't stand still. Hmm. Wiggle, sorry. <laughs> The time's gone quickly. Sorry? Right, she's blind. Of course she can't see the sun setting. 
It just looks like the sun's starting to set. It seems to come as a surprise for her. I guess she must have lost track of time. Sorry, Hisao. I didn't mean to keep you from the library for so long. I quickly moved to allay her concern. Uh, uh, no. It's okay. The library's still open, isn't it? He pauses and takes a moment to think on it. It's probably something I should have asked Shizune when I had the chance, but Lily seems likely to know in any case. Mm, true. It's open until 6.30 during weekdays. A quick glance at my watch confirms I have well enough time to get there. Mm. I might get going in that case. It's been nice talking with you, Lily. She smiles and gives a deep nod, her hands still neatly folded on the table in front of her. It was my pleasure. Oh, come to think of it, shall I show you to where the library is? I couldn't possibly ask for more help. I should be able to find it all right. Well, uh, unless my navigational skills fail me. Which they seem to have a habit of doing. It's all right. I was going to be talking to the librarian there in any case. I could introduce you. This gets better and better. It's pretty hard to deny her offer. If you're sure, then that'd be great. Thanks. As she stands up to follow me, she takes hold of a straight, retractable cane that had been slipped in the handle of her bag on the floor. Compared to the cane the boy in my class had, Lily's looks much thinner and longer. His must be for support, whereas Lily's is for navigation. Together we leave the peaceful room and enter the empty hallway on the way to the library. Side by side, my pace carefully slowed to match hers, we slowly walk through the hallway. It doesn't take long for us to arrive at the door to the warm looking room, apparently situated in the centre of the floor rather than either wing. Little ladies first. She gives an appreciative smile at the gesture, taking the lead as we file in. To the left is the wooden library counter, with the library proper being on the right. It easily dwarfs my old school's library, with a distinct smell of old, of old books giving the place an almost old world air. There don't seem to be a lot of students here, Considering the time, it isn't a big surprise. Everyone's I probably either in the school grounds or in the dorms. Yuko, are you here? He says it to thin air since the librarian doesn't seem to be present and of course Lily can't see this. What's unexpected is that it draws a reaction. Something from under the counter thuds against it, followed by a quiet wail. Oh. <laughs> The origin, apparently the librarian, quickly crawls out and bounces up to extremely rigid attention. Hi, Lily. How can I help you? Her voice is strained in a failing attempt to sound casual and she's rubbing the back of her head. Good afternoon. What happened just now? What a strange sound. Ah, oh, it's nothing. I just hit my head. See, I dropped an eraser under my desk, and while I was looking for it, a pencil dropped in. When I was looking for both of them, you came and surprised me. Are you alright? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't know. Ah, it's okay, it's okay, sorry for making you worry. Ah, this is nothing, I've had worse happen to me. She's quick to reverse Lily's apologies, almost frantically trying to push aside the possibility that she could be in any way in inconvenienced by bashing her head on the counter. Ah, uh, yes, uh, worse things have happened to her. The girl fidgets with her fingers as Lily doesn't seem to drop her concerned expression, and then she shuffles the papers around the counter for no reason. <laughs> I like her too. I like her too. A little shorter than Lily, replete with glasses, freckles, and a very troubled look, she seems to fit a library perfectly. Ah, uh, Lily, uh, did you get my message? Message? Mm. 
Oh, the two imported books that arrived? Ah, uh, right, right. They finally came. I can't believe it took so long, but... Amidst her celebrations, partially for managing to change the topic, I'm sure, she notices me from the corner of her eye and freezes on the spot when she does. <gasps> oh no, I, I'm sorry for not noticing you before. Did you need to check out a book or, or return one? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry. The way she can so quickly shift between moods is a little unsettling. Here's with me, Yuko. This is Hisao, a new student. Hisao, this is Yuko, the school librarian. Pleased to meet you. Oh, Hisao, alright. Hisao, pleased to meet you too, Hisao. For a second, she visibly attempts to engrave the name in her mind so she won't forget. Yuko often arranges to import foreign books in braille for me. Would you like to tell Hisa a little something about the library? Lily's innocent suggestion is met with an expression of abject terror. <gasps> oh, please, Lily, I can't. I don't know what you could be interested in. Oh, this is too much responsibility. How it's any responsibility at all, I, I don't get. But her objection is so sincere, I don't doubt for a second that she would, <laughs> that she would rather disembowel herself on the spot than tell me where the light novels are. But... So, there are a lot of books in Braille here? I attempt to save the day by asking the first thing that pops into my head. It seems to work at least partially, as Yuko seems to not exactly relax, but at least looks slightly less tense. Oh, well, I think about a third or a fourth of Yamaka's library is either in Braille or audio. Makes sense, given all the blind students that had been here. If it's only that, how come this library is so big in the first place? Oh, well, we get a lot of new books regularly because the library is adequately endowed. That's probably why. I, they spend more on new books than on my salary, and then I have to organize a job. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Yuko! <laughs> oh, so troublesome and they weigh so much. I wish I could quit this job. <laughs> A very awkward silence follows this revelation. <laughs> how much I liked her. <laughs> uh, the characters in this game, they're too good. <laughs> they're good. A very awkward silence follows this revelation of too much information. Um, I'll go check the aisles then if you don't mind. It's probably best for all of us, if she doesn't keep talking to me. Very well. Meanwhile, Yuko, I would have those books if it's alright with you. My first impression was right. The library is surprisingly big. Ambling down the narrow aisles, I study the spines of the books in random order, occasionally sliding one out to read the blurb, taking it with me if it looks good. In a few moments, I have a respectable stack of books in my arms. I guess I'll never be stuck for choice in here. The normality of the library sinks in. Sure, there are large print and braille books scattered throughout. But it is what it is. A library. It's as if the calm mood from the room I had tea with Lillian snuck with us in here. Unless it was here to begin with. Something about that puts me at ease, just like before. I reach the end of the aisle and find a collection of desks, set up for study or personal reading. Going a little further though, I discover a nice quiet corner at the back. While the rest of the library has the odd student sitting at a desk, either reading or stealthily sleeping, the back is pretty much deserted. 
I glance around. I see someone who I recognize sitting on one of several beanbags. It's the dark-haired girl from my class. The one who stuck out of the classroom earlier. She's reading a book, keeping it close to her face which makes her look like she's really into it. From the way she was acting today, I had picked her as more of a delinquent than a bookworm. In fact, the mysterious disappearance from the class raises all sorts of whys in my head. Intrigue floats slowly but surely towards the surface, and before I know it, I'm walking towards the mysterious long-haired girl. Yes, that's right. It is the one with the hand on her face at the start. I guess there's no harm in introducing myself as I would with anyone else. She's a classmate, after all. Walking over to another beanbag, I take a seat and lay my books beside it. The girl starts, looking scaredly up at me from underneath her fringe. This is the first time I've seen her this close. Underneath her long, dense bangs, I can see that part of her face, at least a third if not half, is pretty badly scarred. My eyes are immediately drawn to the scars, subconsciously peeking past her hair until they meet her own eyes. For a second I am shocked, and divert my eyes to the book in her hands, before I realize that looking away probably only makes it worse. It takes too many seconds to collect myself, and remember what I walked up to her for. Well, I know what the... Well, since I'm trying to... trying to... she's in there routed. Um, I know what choice I have to make. But, um, we'll introduce ourselves to Hanako another day. How about that? Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It's, it's okay. The girl certainly doesn't look like it's okay, but I let it slide. So, uh, do you mind if I sit here? She seems to be very uncertain whether it's okay for or, not, or not for me to sit, but finally she nods just a little. Oh, okay. I take the seat next to her, and she hides herself behind her book. Life of Pi. Never heard of it. S uh, uh, sorry again for startling you. I am Hisao. She looks up from her book, stalling a little before replying. I... no. We're in the same... same class. Her speech is stilted and so quiet that it is barely audible even in the still library. Somehow I think that my delinquent impression of her was wrong. Anako. I'm... Anako. I resist the urge to say that's a nice name, just to have something to say, but really it's the only thing that I can think of. I feel like an idiot. Everyone here must be used to being different to each other, and here I am being all bothered and fussed about that kind of thing. Uh, don't let me interrupt your reading. I'll just check these books if you don't mind. He nods a little and sighs a little sigh of relief. So I try to read the covers and the introductions of the books I picked up, and she buries her face in her book. Uncomfortable silence consumes us. My eyes still wander her direction. Wander to her direction, and I sneak peeks at her flowing hair and the scars it's hiding. After a while, I realize that she's doing the same, and only pretending to be immersed in Life of Pi. Her gaze is not inquisitive at all, though, and it darts around like a scared rabbit. When our gazes finally meet, the chain reaction is unstoppable. She stands up forcefully from the beanbag and takes a deep breath. I... 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 Gotta go do something! Without warning, Anako takes off and runs toward the counter. Her hair-like takeoff catches me so off guard that I don't manage to go after her until she has a good head start. 
I highly recommend it. Um, I like this game a lot. As with most things that I do on stream, the only thing that I can say is that I like it. But, uh, <laughs> nonetheless, I do like it. By the time I reach the counter, she is nowhere to be seen. Billy and Yuko are happily chatting away. Knowing that I won't be able to catch Hanako myself, I approach the girls. Uh, hey. Uh, did you see... Uh, notice a girl run past you? Um, maybe? What did she look like? Long, dark hair. Uh, kinda shy. She had... Uh, well, some scars on her face. Mm, you wouldn't be talking about Hanako, would you? Yeah, that's her. I saw her reading and tried to talk to her, but I, I think I scared her off or something. Oh dear. Kyuko, would you, would you excuse me? I'd better try and find her. Sure, I'll just hold on to these until you come back. Um, what's going on? I'm sorry, but I'll have to explain it to you some other time. Right. I'll see you later then. Lily hastily grabs her cane and hurries out of the library, leaving me alone with Yuko. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this place. Did I do something wrong? Uh, what did you do? Nothing. Uh, I was just looking for some books and then she got this fit and ran off. The most offending thing I can think of was that I might have looked at her general direction a few times. Ah, uh, well, she is a very timid girl. You have to be very careful around her. Uh, she can be very jumpy, I think, and she's not accustomed to talking with other people. Isn't that a bit strange? Uh, I wonder. It's just how she is, I think. Yuko doesn't sound all that convincing. Then again, maybe this is just the norm around here. Everyone has their own problems, or else they wouldn't be here. And how should I deal with these people? Forcing myself to act overly casually only makes me feel phony. Like I was supposed to be ignoring the elephant in the room. Yuko fidgets, looking like she wants to say something to that, but resists it. I think it's an elephant only if you feel that way. I guess she doesn't have a good sense of self-restraint. It makes me smile, and she blushes heavily. What? Did that sound stupid? No, no. It sounded really wise. I guess you're right. It's more about me than anyone else. Neither of us has anything to add, so Yuko fills the silence by shuffling some papers around. People who have papers on their desks really like doing that. Uh, did you find any books? I should be closing soon. I mean, this uh, library should be closing, but, but I, I have to do it. I hope that's not, that's not too inconvenient for you. Oh, yeah. I want some books, but I left them over there because... I'll just go get them. I fetch my stack of books from beside the beanbags where Hanako and I were sitting and return to the counter. Oh, wow. You read a lot, don't you? I surprise myself with that too, honestly. At least... But when I really think about it. I had a lot of free time early this year, so I just kind of started reading books to fill that time. I couldn't do much else. I see. But she doesn't say anything else, and just checks out my books for me. I guess this is what they call tact. Holding the library books with one arm, I twirl my pocket for the key to the door. A sudden sound from behind startles me, making me nearly drop the books I'm carrying or the key that I almost managed to get into the lock. Who is it? Kenji Potter! I turn around to see who is talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood, although the light glinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. It's just me. This makes him pause and lick his lips nervously. Who is me? I don't know anyone called me. Are you some new guy again? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before, yesterday. 
I don't think so. I would remember someone who I met only yesterday. When was that? What day is it today? I try to ignore him. Is he joking or what? <laughs> Prove that we've met before. Uh, you live across the hall. You're Kenji. Kenji jumps back, his eyes filled with an un un uncomprehending fear. Uh, how do you know my name? Damn, this can only mean one of two things. Either we have met and you are telling the truth, and I just can't remember it, or you are a spy. Pauses. A psychic spy. His eyes dart around me, trying to peek into my room, although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Kenji points a finger in my face damningly. Unlike you! Stop that, man. We met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. <laughs> Lies! If you think you can pass as Hisao because I'm legally blind, you are sorely mistaken. You, you don't even look like him. I mean, the, the resemblance is real, real slim. Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him. Exasperated, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. Stay there. Kenji comes closer, one careful step at a time. I stay still lest he assault me physically, although I doubt he could do much damage even if he did. Oh. Wait, I see it now. Damn, it really is you. Sighing again, and then once again, for good measure, I step backwards just in case. Hmm. What's up, man? You don't look too good, I think. Something wrong? Uh, I don't know. I just had something stupid happen to me. A few stupid things, actually. Even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on other people here, and I have no idea if it's because of me or, or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kenji. It's not like we've had any contact either. Uh, that's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you a psychic spy and all, but you can never be too careful. It's the hard reality we live in. <laughs> I'm slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. You see, this is how it is, this world. There is no justice. You see, even when I lose, I win because I don't lose the lesson. What does that even mean? It doesn't matter. He dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand. So what happened? Why the long face? Do you have a long face? Uh, it's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally. Literally, too. She actually ran away from me. It was my fault, really, I think. I'm not really used to all this yet. A girl? A cute one? Cute? Uh, that's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair, but... Face... Shush. Shush. Yeah, cute, I guess. I knew it. There are a lot of cute girls here. A strangely disproportionate amount. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of the school. I tried to warn you, man, but did you listen? I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes, dark secrets. Extremely dark, like a black hole. Have you noticed... The number of girls in this school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys. It's like 60-40. He turns his head to the left and stares off into the distance at nothing. Why is it like this? I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad, but that is a full 20%. One would think that a girl with such a huge pool of women would be a man's dream, but no! What I'm about to tell you could blow your mind. Are you ready? I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. N no, I'm, I'm not ready. I only get as far as turning the doorknob before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. I believe that the school is a 
battleground, the site of a feminist infiltration. The disparity in the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they have come. In case this Cold War turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the eternal war against the forces of the feminists. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumber men. It's not a 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man. Even in America, women are the majority by a hair. They're building up their numbers. In the past, the buildup of the military has always been the clearest sign of imminent war. Japan is just the first step. Our economy is badass, and the country itself is small and isolated, yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value. The perfect target. They are so cunning. Expected of women. Soon the day will come when... Kenji's voice trails off ominously. That is why you can't trust them. They'll string you along and then kill you just as they killed me. You'll end up just like me. Oh, hell no. I can't stop myself from blurting it out. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. That's the best I can think of. So, you're not supposed to say something like that. Damn, so rude. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, vast feminist conspiracy. Stop, stop it, stop. I lost you way, way back there somewhere. Somewhere around <laughs> feminist infiltration. Too hard to follow. It's cool. I have some graphs and stuff in my room. And puppets. You like puppets? No puppets. Uh, you don't like puppets. Okay. But graphs are still cool, right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking, moving his hands in an animated way as he continues to rant on. Oh, MX, thank you. I agree. It's a certified classic. This is too strange. I had pegged him as relatively normal, but it's clear that I was wrong. Something on your mind, dude? Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. Kenji frown looking, looking Kenji frowns looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? It can't be, because I'm the last sane man in an insane world. That is my dream. You can't just steal a man's dream. What the hell? They can't be two last sane men. It would invalidate that whole last part. And that part is kind of important. They can only be one, like in that foreign movie where there could only be one. And in the end, there is only one dude left, because that, that was the point. I have never seen anyone talk so heatedly and so defensively about something about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my graphs. I also have a list of other dark and complex conspiracies that the school holds, as tangled as... Uh, quick. Finish my analogy for me. Be a pal. I'm going to go to bed now. It's extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy. But whatever. I like you. You seem like a cool dude. Most people don't understand what I'm talking about when they try to explain the vast feminist conspiracy to them. Denial is a terrible thing. Later. He claps me on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly it's like he didn't even open the door but instead walked right through like it's a ghost. I don't know if I can fully digest what just happened so I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first, face first into, face first into bed. It takes me some time to relax and get out so I can get started on homework. It's because the sheets are cool and comforting against my cheeks and it feels good just lying there with my eyes closed. The school is like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain and each person is stranger than the last. I just can't seem to fit in. What irony. One would think that fitting in a place that's made for people who are unfit for anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help take the edge off. And the words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place really is more a school and less a hospital pretending it's a school than I thought it would be. If nothing else, the scenery is beautiful. I open one eye, 
seeing the school books and bottles of pills arranged side by side on my desktop. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. I'm sorry, I, um... I can't read- I can't do the Kenji reading as good as it should be. Kenji Potter! <laughs> I feel very tired this morning, probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day. On top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. After saying hi to Shizune and Misha, I start doing the work as instructed from the board. It already looks like today is going to be heavy. I don't have a problem with that now, though. Shizune and Misha might jump on me trying to get an answer about whether or not I've decided to join the student council, even if it's just one day. I wouldn't put it past them to try, and I don't have an answer for them if they do, so the situation is convenient for me. About ten minutes into class, Anako walks in and takes a seat, but no one looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her, na on her lateness. He does, however, stop us to say that we're going to break into groups again. I turn my head and see that Shizune and Misha are looking at me. Shizune gives me a smile that is equal parts cute and menacing. There, This is a smile that says, we have you now. There is no escape. Kichan, it looks like we're together again. Yay, yay. Misha leans sideways while Shizune pushes her desk closer to mine. There really is no escape now unless I were to jump through the window. Jumping out the window isn't the best option, sadly. What's wrong, Hichan? Oh, Hichan, have you been thinking about what you said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, didn't you? It's okay, Hichan. We were talking about it after you left, and it would be rude to expect you to already have an answer for us this early, right? Right? <laughs> I am so happy you two are able to have a laugh at my expense, and even more pleased to know that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. Now that that's over, Shizuna snaps back into serious mode and smacks today's assignment with the back of her hand in an overly dramatic and important way. When I actually look at the stuff, it's mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. I almost want to say something about how her rush to get started seems a bit much, considering the small amount of work. In fact, Shizuna probably knows how little there is and simply doesn't care. Yeah, it seems like the workload doesn't matter to her as much as the fact that there is work. The actual amount is unimportant. She approaches everything with the same level of, amb of ambition. While I'm reading, I let my eyes wander around the room and catch Hanako trying her hand at solving the problems. It looks like she's working alone. I can't remember seeing her working with other people before. Thinking back to how shy she is, it's understandable. Uh, hey, that girl over there. Hmm? Ku Uh, uh, Hanako, over there. Does she always work alone? Hmm, I think so, Hichan. Do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? Oh, uh, I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something. Hmm, no, I don't think that would be a good idea, Hichan. Why not? Shichan wouldn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffles around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that lilting up and down quality present in everything she says. Just because, Shichan. By now, Shizuna has noticed our conversation and it makes me realize again how Misha has been signing everything she's been saying this whole time. What, Chicha? The friend of my enemy is my enemy? That sounds so harsh. I'm not going to say that. You said it anyway. Uh, I know, Chicha. It's fine if you over here. I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her I wouldn't be able to understand a thing she's in there saying and vice versa. Is that also why she signs all the time so there is never a conversation she's in there will be left out of? Anyway, we should start on the problems now, Hichan. We finish with time to spare, and 
I decide to ask if there are any alternatives to the cafeteria, as frankly, the food so far has been subpar. This sends Shizune and Misha arguing among themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, but I don't think we have time to go all the way there. And what about the bill? Are they arguing just for the fun of it? Maybe. They seem so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. I look over my shoulder towards the back of the classroom. She seems to be studying her notes from the previous class. It's an odd sight. Everyone else in the class is busying themselves with the lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, rearranging desks, the ones with actual box lunches mixed in and chattering like everyone else, only interrupted by short bouts of eating. But when I watch Hanako, it feels like I'm the only one who can see her. Almost as if she was invisible. Sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself from the rest of the class on her own accord? I see her look over her shoulder towards the classroom's rear door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned a page since I started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone. What to do? Well... Although... I could go and have a chat to the girl who doesn't want to chat with me. I think... I think I will... Wait for Shizune and Misha to finish. Misha and Shizune are still arguing about their choice for lunch place. Incomprehensible for a pair of high school students who have to take a taxi at least to make it to downtown and back in time. Haven't you finished already? Oh, sorry, Hichan. Were you waiting for us? You don't have any plans? Plans? For lunch? Oh. Uh. Well, I, I don't, so I thought I could hang with you guys. Misha smiles victoriously at my lack of plans and excitedly translates my response to Shizune. If you don't have anything specific planned out, do you want to eat lunch with me and Shichan? Oh, oh, we're going to town for lunch, though. Don't worry, Shichan, it's not that far. Sure, I'll come with you. And with that, we leave the classroom. Just around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a runway train. Out. Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer-like green eyes looking up at me. They belong to the perpetrator, a short girl who bumped into me and has now fallen down onto the hallway floor. She wears a PE uniform and a very worried frown. The former strikes me as a rather strange thing to have on during a lunch break. More striking than that, though, is that she doesn't have legs. Well, she does, but they are not flesh and bone. Her pale and very much flesh and bone leg, uh, her thighs end in shins and feet made of some black metallic or plastic-like material. They look disturbingly artificial and unnatural. It almost makes me forget that my chest is hurting. The girl winces a little, rubs her nose and jumps up. Oh, man. Hey, are you alright? I'm sorry about that, really. I wasn't looking where I was going, and you just came out of nowhere. Sorry. Sorry. She's looking really apologetic, and the hurt puppy way of looking apologetic. I quickly forget about being angry or anything, since hurt puppies are my weak spot. It's okay. Uh, don't worry about it. Ouch. I say that. But there's a stinging pain growing in my chest, and I know that this is about the biggest possible danger for my condition. Don't overexert yourself, don't forget your medication, and most of all, don't get hit in the chest. I try to rub my solar plexus to chase the pain away, holding my breath in an attempt to hear my heartbeat. It seems normal. Hey, should I get a nurse? The worried, high-pitched voice of the girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds, dumbfounded, until I realize that I probably looked worse off than I really was, doubled over myself and looking all tense. Damn, I'm overly worried about my heart. No need, I'm fine. Managing to say something in response, 
I pull myself upright, feeling my sore ribs one last time and taking a deep breath. You just knocked the wind out of me. Big time. But it's nothing more than that. You sure you're okay? I hit you pretty hard. It's okay, I said I was fine and nothing's broken. No harm done. That's good, I was... I feel a hand on my shoulder at the same... Oh, whoops. Never mind. Eep. I don't have time to look behind me because Shizune is already shoving me aside and stumping over to the girl, signing furiously at her. Miss Hibarazaki, I saw that. Running in the halls is strictly forbidden. Misha translates right on Shizune's tail, but her voice is girlishly playful, not full of the divine fury Shizune's arm movements would seem to call for. Oh, sorry, I was just going to get some stuff and I was kind of in a hurry. You've been told this a thousand times before. Your reckless behavior endangers other students, and even worse, it's explicitly against the school regulations. The girl blushes and starts to fidget nervously like a little child caught misbehaving. It's so cute, I find myself smiling. Oh, I know that. I, I, I am. I, I was just... Make sure that this will not happen again, although I'm sure telling you this is futile and only causes me future headache um, only causes me further headache when you choose to ignore the regulations. Got that, Emmy? The small girl sticks her tongue out in response. Ah! I gotta go! Teacher will have my head! I promised to help out with printouts, but I went running instead. So sorry, I've gotta change and everything! Before Misha or Shizune can, or I can say anything, she's already bolted from where she was a second ago, almost halfway down the stairwell. Zoom! Shizune looks like she's about to go nuclear on the spot, so I smile at her in a vain attempt to calm her down. Oh, are you okay, Hitan? That Hibarazaki girl is always like that, causing trouble to others. Uh, you know, I'm pretty certain Shizune wouldn't call me Hitan. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, anyway, I'm okay. Just got the wind knocked out of me. That's great, Hita. I wouldn't call that great, but I let it slide this one time. So let's hurry, Hita, to have lunch. We promise it'll be great. I'll, I'll take your word for it. What kind of a place is it? A uh, restaurant or something? It's a tea house, Hitan. Tea house. That sounds kind of fancy. Why are you looking at your wallet, Hitan? It's okay if you don't have any money. We'll cover for you. Uh, that's really nice of you. Uh, thanks. It's okay, Hitan. After all, we're friends, right, Hitan? It's only been three days. Are we really friends that quickly? <laughs> but hearing that makes me happy. Ah, it's only for today though, and only if you accept right now. Do you want to go, Hicha? I start wondering if this is some kind of trap. Is this Misha's suggestion or Shizune's? This is important. I'm still a little apprehensive about the possible motives of a girl whose favorite pastime is the game of world domination. N oh, I'm, I'm just being paranoid. Actually, they have grown on me already and I do have to go to town sometime. So, why not now, with them? I've never actually been to a tea house before. All my expectations are from what I've seen about them on TV, but those are period dramas and these are modern times. It might just be a regular cafe and they're just calling it a tea house. Either way, I'm curious about that too, but there's another reason for me to join them. Ah, oh, okay. I'm, I'm trying, I've been trying to play this game long enough so that you could meet all of the main heroines, but, but there's still, there's still one missing. And I don't think we, I don't think we can see her yet. <laughs> weeps, uh, weeps. So, um, I might I might call it here for might call it here for today. And we will we'll have to meet our remaining remaining bishojo 
another time. <laughs> what did you think? Although we have, um, honestly, the game is not short. There's a lot of words. <laughs> I think that if I was going to read through one person's entire route, it would probably take me at least... At least maybe three or four. I mean, it depends on the route, but most of them are quite... Like, they're quite fleshy. Like, even though this, this visual novel is, is free, I do think that the greatest praise for it goes to the writing. And there's a lot of it. So. <laughs> Kenji's an entire lad. I enjoyed my stay. Thank you for coming, Rexco Dragon. I, I appreciate it. Kenji is my favorite so far. He is very fun. He is very fun. I think he's hilarious. And also, um, troubled and can't see very well. But. Um, either way, uh, we made it through the, the prologue, and um, we're just uh, having a, a peek around. Oh, hey. Thank you for coming and hanging out while I read. Um, it wouldn't take me this long to read this, obviously. Just um, doing it aloud makes it much lengthier than it needs to be. But, um... Oh, <laughs> You'll unlock the editor route one day. One day. I think that um, if I can play this game and you guys can figure out who is my favorite, we'll see. I actually had no plans to play my to play my favorite character's route on stream. I was I was just going to play. I was just going to play whoever. Whoever chat wanted to like see most, whoever you um liked the most unanimously. <laughs> the game is free to download, free to play. I think it's very high quality. Um I I guess um since uh, since Hume brought over the root letter folks, uh Maybe the writing wasn't so good over there. <laughs> I guess I sent us on the she's in her route at the start. I think she's in her has a good route. I mean, I think it's um you'll you'll be spending a lot of time with Shizune and with Misha because the two of them kind of come hand in hand. You can't really romance one without the other. <laughs> Thanks for the cleansing from root letters. Yeah. Was it that bad? Oh. I really liked your voicing of Misha. Thank you. My my inadequate my inadequate um <laughs> Yaruge <of> voicing. <laughs> it really was bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to hear it. Um I was really interested in the story. Maybe I'll maybe I'll just um I'll ping Hume for like a quick rundown someday. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Catastrophically bad plot. I mean, okay. Um, I think recently I saw something pop up. Like, I don't use, I don't really use Twitter, but occasionally Twitter will still suggest me posts, even though it's unbidden right it'll still make suggestions and um i remember there was like some post about your cancelable anime hot take it was something like that and um i kind of feel the same about like a lot of media um i think i don't um i like me like many people out there 
I like some pretty trashy things, right? I think that <laughs> there's some, some things that I enjoy media speaking in terms of shows, games, writing that I enjoy that is probably objectively bad. <laughs> But I still like them. I don't really, I don't really have anything against them. People enjoy them. There's nothing wrong with that. Um. There's. Uh. I guess. Like, when you guys say that root letter was bad, do you mean that not only was it bad, but that it was like terrible? Oh yeah, yeah, like like you really didn't enjoy it. It wasn't the kind of thing that you could enjoy at all because it was just it was just that that awful. Oh, I mean, I enjoy some things that are just bad. Like the only redeeming thing for them <laughs> to me is probably that I like them, not because they're good, just <laughs> I like them. <laughs> I see. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll look into it. Um, I, I hold. Did you guys make it to the end? Did Hume make it to the end of the novel? Oh, bless her. I don't know if we'll be able to make it to the end of Katawa Shoujo, but I, I really like it. You can probably tell <laughs> from the amount of times that I've said that, but. Um, when the game was like being conceived, it was just like a, just like a little floating concept, I think, but they poured an immense amount of effort into like making it real, making it a game that you could play, giving these characters so much life. Chat told her what the other endings were, and she got even more upset. Oh no. Ah. Well, um. Yeah. There's a few visual novels that I. that I like a lot. Um. I think I've read some that I would consider to be a bit ashy, but, um. I, this is one of them that I think always lives with me when I come across it again. I always have fond feelings and I think, oh, I should play it again. And I mean, here we are. Here we are again. I think, oh, Katawa Shoujo, I want to play it again. Oh, yeah, it was really loved in development. It was just, it was so well loved. And, um... I think that really means a lot. When I play through the game, I also feel that love conveyed. I like it. It beta triggers for no reason except to force drama in the moment. Oh, sad. Sad. When a game is made with love, it's so easy to see. It can be. Um. I think in this case, because it's writing, because so much of the craft is the writing and, you know, the art, the collaborative effort that went into making it, that I, you know, I think it's really palpable as an experience. Perhaps it's slightly less so when the game is made <laughs> using other platforms, but... Oh, Silent, hello! Sorry, I'm just about done, but, um... I actually forgot the name of Katawa Shoujo for years, so I'm glad I got to see it through Raid today. Oh no, thank you. I might um I might go back and continue it later if you guys want to follow me um in my journey to relive it. Uh you don't have to because I'll be reading the whole thing and that's pretty tedious, but Oh. Oh thank you. Um it is really comfy. Well, you know, it dabbles in some very important themes, like the fact that it's called Katawa Shoujo, which means like disability girls, is like the big sign, right? That's exactly what it's about. But when you play the game, I think you really see that um, 
everyone who made the game, the writers who put it together, there is no disrespect. There's absolutely no disrespect in their portrayals of these people. Um, I think that there's like some funny tropes and like, you know, some silly characters, right? You know, you meet Kenji who is Kenji Potter. Everything that features in this game, I know has been treated with a great deal of sensitivity. And so while the characters, like, they, they build, they exist, they have their own lives, they function like normal people, you know, these disabilities are important. You have a main character who has, you know, he's recently discovered that, you know, there's something wrong with him that has to change the way he lives his life now and you know for the entirety of his life he has just thought that he's been healthy so this is this is a shocking change it's a huge um thing to tussle with when you're like a teenager right this this guy's still hunt he's still in high school so he has, I'm sure, a lot of misgivings. All well, these are all portrayed in just like these chapters that we read already. But he has misgivings, he has his own judgments, he has his own insecurities, and he just, um, you know. He also, I think, is probably an accurate representation of what that stigma might look like to, to a boy like that. Like, like, without trying to be too kind to him, because obviously some of the things he says, like, aren't, aren't as sensitive. Um, you know, he says and thinks some things that come across as, you know, poorly for the situation. But I think that that too is also accurate to life. Um, this character who is the main character, I think he also feels real for his own learning. In every route that you play in Katawa Shoujo, Hisao, the main character, he also does a great amount of learning for himself. Like, so he gets to know these girls, he gets to know the characters, but he himself, um, he grows a bit, he develops in the way that teenage boys should. And I think that's also really important for engaging in this story is that like he's not perfect at all um i think he's likable too in his own way you know even though we 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 are being him either way this game is very well written you might not like all parts of it it is already a decade old so there might be parts where you think oh maybe this didn't age so well but that you know it can't be helped for, for what it is i think it's already very good and um, I really am incredibly fond. Ah, oh, maybe I should play. Maybe I should play something trashy sometime though. I always bring to stream. I'm like, this is something that I'm like, and I think it's really good. But I think I should bring something to stream someday and be like, this is something that I really like, and it's really bad. But I like, I like it anyway. <laughs> Kenji is the only meh thing about it. I think Kenji is hilarious. He's okay. <laughs> I'm okay with Kenji. <laughs> He's just a joke. I don't know. Even the side characters are for the most part, like, they're well written too. <laughs> Kenji's my boy. I'm up for whatever you want to do. Um, gosh. I don't know. I like most things. I like most things and I want to play most things. If I could do like an entire playthrough of all of the routes in Katawa Shoujo, I don't know if that would be allowed, but I would do it. That would probably take even longer than reading Dorian Gray. <laughs> Genji can be obnoxious, but I still love him. He'd be my best friend if I went to high school with him. What's something you consider trashy? Okay, when it term when it comes to like favorite shows, something that I consider slightly trashy but that I like a lot is the Mahjong anime Saki. I don't know if I've spoken about this, but like Saki is one of my favorite anime shows. And it's just a bunch of girls playing Mahjong. 
Like it's it's not deeper than that. It's actually not deeper than that. And I like it a lot. It's one of my favorites from when I was in school. <laughs> um, to me, that's slightly trashy, excellent content. I adore it. I really adore it. I think there's not a lot of anime I would say that I that I would say I don't like though. Um, I think every show has like its up and like like its ups and downs. But uh, in terms of anime that I don't like, that I probably wouldn't, um, that I would say I don't like is I don't like Anohana, and I don't like Koe no Katachi. Um, two things that I won't talk about. Two things that I can say that I don't like. So, like, um, they are, like, they're good. I would say they're objectively good, um, in terms of the way that they're made, but I don't like them. And so, for me, I can say that. But I, I like some pretty terrible things. <laughs> I like, I like some pretty, pretty, um, silly things mostly because i feel like for for a piece of media to be likable it doesn't necessarily have to be super well made or anything like that and we came through the years making stuff and improving and making more stuff and improving so you know that's that do be how it is <laughs> that's a fair take i won't explain why i don't like them but i just personally don't like them um and like that's a that's a dislike not like a i just don't care about that anime there's lots of shows that i've watched that i think oh well maybe i wouldn't watch it again but i don't like those two so ah <sighs> sangats no lion is good to me i like i like the characters a lot in in that story uh, Chihaya Furu, I also watched, I watched some of it. I don't think I watched all of it. I'm curious about bun takes. You want to know bun takes? Um. If you don't like Minma, you don't like Anohana. That's my bun take. That's the only thing I can say about it. But I feel like this should be true. If you have seen Anohana, if you don't like Menma, you probably don't like Anohana. <laughs> what do you think about pineapple and pizza? I like pineapple and pizza. I'm okay with it. Like I, I kind of don't don't really care too much about food takes. <laughs> I don't care too much about food takes. There's an Android Vision novel called Stellarin. It's not the most well-written thing in the world, but I love all the characters so much. Oh. I mean, if you like it... I mean, that, that that's just it, though. If you like it, then I'm happy for you. I'm sure the person who brought that into being, even if it wasn't the best thing they ever made, if someone appreciated what they made, then it was worth making. Coming from me as someone who's been... Okay, so what I've been doing recently on the side like every day is um i've been preparing for um preparing for more bun lore releases like more bun lore and then also bun bun version for bun unit four i've been calling like instead of um referring to it as just as just regular um as just regular level up bun it's <laughs> It's, um, I, I have, I have two scenarios planned. So there's two bundle scenarios planned that I've talked about. One of them is the clay side story and one of them is the lead up to this new model, this new model and new design that I'm, I'm puzzling together, bun unit four. I'm like an Eva, like an Eva unit, unit four. I'm Eru four. Um, it's. It's still, um, 
Still being drawn, still being designed, that design. I'm sure none of this will come to light for like some months yet, but like I'm preparing now because because it's just me and I have to prepare early and I say this every time, but I'm slow at doing things. But like it's um it's a lot to do, right? I think regardless of how quickly I take it, um how well I plan my time, it's still a huge time sink. <laughs> it's still a huge time sink and it zaps saps my time and my energy to 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 try and you're making another model. I I have I have plans for... I have certain plans. I'm not going to explain exactly what those plans are, but... Um, it will come with a new version of Bun. So um, Bun, will, Bun will be able to evolve again in these upcoming scenarios. Um, <laughs> the strike out of freedom. I, well, as much as I'd like to take my time, if I did take my time, nothing would ever get done. So with reasonable haste, with reasonable haste, I'm always working on these things. And it's not like my <laughs> story burns to triple. It, it'll be a bit like that. I will evolve again. Streaming isn't like my main... Um, it doesn't bring the bread for me, right? Like, um, I didn't get into streaming so that I could make it... My... My stay. Um, I really... A lot of the things that I do for streaming for story buns, for YouTubing, is, is a pure passion project, right? Like, even though a lot of you are, like, super kind enough to, to fund me in my, in my various efforts to, to make things and, and produce things, um, I really, uh, Bun law is kind of like even though it's under the umbrella of like a bun law, um, Shirazuya Eru as a character like she exists. The character and her story exists, and for me, I didn't, I didn't make law videos. I didn't write law scenarios so that I could. Um, so that I could fit into what everyone else is doing as a VTuber. Um, the fact that I'm VTubing, it came hand in hand with the law because the law for me is very important. The law came first. I think the the VTubing, the VTubing is also there, but the law exists. And um, this is this is a. <laughs> An interesting way for me to share those things with you. But nonetheless, I'm grateful to be supported to do so. Um, even though I come on stream and I do nothing at all. Um, refreshing take to see for VTubing. It's perhaps maybe a little different from, you know, um, what, what VTubers do, you know. People will have this amazing wild lore to kick off their VTubing career and they'll just be streamers nonetheless, right? Oh, <laughs> thank you for hanging and chatting with me too. Um, I, I know that I go for like quite long stretches of silence at times. Um, I am always like slowly chipping away at the stuff that I'm working on and um, I'm not really the type who likes to show previews <laughs> of what I'm working on. I just like to come out with what I'm, what I've made when it's done. <laughs> so, do you have a plan on when you're going to stream this game again? Um, I I don't have a plan. What's the? It's um, 
it's not too late for me to make a schedule for this week. I might... I have, um... Yeah. I might see if I can fit in another stream this week. It could be one or two. Um, depending on... Actually, yeah, depending on how things go, should be fine. Um, I'd like to share more Katawa Shoujo with you, but I'd also like to do other things such as um, my regular reading nonsense and my regular gaming nonsense, aka Dragon Nest, which I haven't touched in a while. Wow. Oh, you're inspirational. The brain cogs are moving. They're not at all. Um, I'm just too slow to make the things that I want to make, is all. I thought you were going to say rat party. Hey, I'd like to rat party finger guns. It feels better to drop something finished rather than tease something unfinished. Just as a personal preference, perhaps. I think that's just how I like to do it. Rather than, um... Hmm. But the reason why I'm doing it is because I'm bad at hype. Uh, I, I think, I think I feel like I can only create a little pool of hype. I'm, I'm not really one for hyping stuff up. Like, I probably, even if I made this model and I made a bunch of new assets, I would just come out with it one day to be all like, three days until my new model debut. <laughs> and then that would be it. I would just say that. There's no way my bun YouTuber Oshi could possibly make a schedule season 2. Okay, it should be like season 3 because I've made two schedules using that schedule graphic so far. I know that's not much, but it's something. Pleasant surprise. <laughs> ah, Why can't I make things fast enough? Um, I've been working on um, things I can tell you. Is I've been working on a video i've been um i've been working on a video for bun um it has has some art that i drew which is not very good art but um when the video is when the video is made and um everything is assembled which might take a while i'm uh yeah it might take a while because that's what it's like to wrangle oh it's your art so it's amazing not the way i made this video it's not but thank you for believing in me um uh i'll i'll definitely um i'll definitely come stream and show you guys when when things are prepared um so even in these stretches of silence even if i don't talk about anything that i'm making I hope you guys know that I always have something in mind, or that uh, I'm looking to, looking to further on the story, or um, in this case, glances at my glances at my paper. But I have a new bun. I have a new bun in the works. Even your non-dominant hand draws are good. I miss doing those, now that you mention it. I kind of, um... I kind of miss having a... Having a left-handed draw up for grabs here and there. I might, um... I might bring back some sort of wheel someday. Mayhaps not soon, because... I want to stream Katawa Shoujo and read it, but... Either way. What else was there did I have to say in terms of updates? I took a photo of my ivy and I showed it to my friend. Could make it a channel point thing. Uh, I, I, I could, but I guess I don't want to, I don't want to like be doing it at inopportune times. Yeah, that I could enable and disable. Had to pick a 
I don't know. I feel like possibly I could do another event like with the Choco event. Except this time it's left-handed drawings only event. <laughs> Did they give any pointers attack from left or right? I, I don't think so. Hold on. I'll I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you photos of photos of my ivy. I don't know if this will work. I probably can't. Um... No, that doesn't work. Oh. Whoops. Oh, no, no. Looks fine. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Sorry for the scare, something came up. Here is... Oh. <laughs> the size of this photo, hold on. It's a photo from my actual life. Oh wait, 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 there's another. There is... there is another. <laughs> I sent you my ivy, please respond. <clears throat> also, I have to put it out there though that, um... Oh, here's the other one. But this is already like half of the size it was before. I was so I I had to I had to um to put some into the bins this this um this weekend. And um uh, for the first time in quite a long time I was like trying to get under trying to get under the um you can see that there's like a bunch of dead leaves like trying to get through and I saw the edge of my roof guttering for the first time in like quite a long time but if I had to go back to this this here for reference on size when I crouch uh, when I crouch on my roof to cut like you see you see that like um it looks like a tree <laughs> like a tree pretty much um on the oh, the rust is not my roof that's not my roof this is my roof you see that um this area there's like really thick basically tree branch tree branch growth where the ivy has been there for so long when i'm trying to cut that i'm crouching down right the ivy is like it provides me shade like when it's sunny and I'm crouched there trying to cut the ivy, <laughs> there's shade. <laughs> so that, that's the, um, <laughs> that's a size reference for you. I realize that it doesn't look very big in these photos, but it's quite large. <laughs> it's quite large. Anyway, um, curse me for trying to, trying to show everyone the ivy on my roof, but, um, as you can see, it's, like, flowering. Not only is it flowering, it's, like, fruiting, but there's bees everywhere. How ginormous are your bins? My bins aren't very big. This is why I have to, this is why I have to empty a little bit of the ivy into the bins every week, but it's just not that much, you know? Just not that much. So in in the other photo, you can see that some of the ivy branches that I've snipped like off, I've had to just like leave to the side, and they're getting dry, so the leaves are all brown. Ugh. Anyway.
Anyway, uh, even like this, this is like half the size it used to be. So um, it's... I think it's a little bit more manageable now. I feel encouraged now that I've seen the edge of my roof guttering. I don't think it's white anymore. But... Oh, <laughs> thank you for the kind words about my overlay. Um, but I, I, I think I will indeed be tussling with dead leaves and... It's so... Just... It's like a tree, it's like a bush. It really is larger than the bushes that are growing on my neighbor's driveway. <laughs> uh, but I'm dying, so... But I am dying of trying to... Trying to haul... Haul onto the... It's, it's bush. It's like a bush and a half. Like two bushes in one. And it's just growing in the, the gap. In the gap between that shed and my garage. Anyway, so that has... Now you have seen the IV diagram with photos supplied. I'll keep you updated on if I make any progress with it. two and a half bushes. Oh, oh, it's so much, you guys. I need to skip then. I need to skip then to... I'm gonna make my next donation goal a skip then to throw away all of the ivy on my roof. Oh, bursts into tears. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. Oh, you think I'm kidding? You think I'm kidding? I don't have a green bin big enough to fit all of this ivy. It's so painful. I don't have any way to take it. And, you know, when things dry out, I don't have a fireplace to burn it. I'm just... I'm stuck with all of this ivy. And even if I kill the ivy, I have no place to put it. <laughs> it's your bye. And I'm, I'm feeble. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my TED talk. Ah. Uh. Redeem tools to snip ivy with. A pair of new hedge clippers. <laughs> That's all so real. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Need to rent a bin. Wish I was kidding. Cripes. <clears throat> hello, Lan. Hello. Good afternoon. I'm... Sorry, we stopped playing Katoa Shoujo like an hour ago when I was... <laughs> and then I started talking about Ivy and... Time flew. This winter, one bun fights to save the remaining rooftop. My rooftop will be okay. Um, I'm sure I will... Uh, I'm sure I will at least... Free the guttering... Like, the goal is even if I can't get rid of the ivy, it's to um, get at least part of it off my roof, which at this moment is pretty ambitious. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can do it for a while. Speaking of, what are the roots clutching your coffin? Oh, there's no ivy leaves. They're just evil roots, but please don't call it ivy. I'll, I'll cry. I'm here with, with a, a spooky tree. Ah. Ah. I'll make a donation goal later. I'll make a donation goal later for... for a new pair of hedge clippers and maybe a spade. Maybe I'll buy some hedge clippers. The, the ones that I'm using cost $3 from the Salvation Army. Um, they're okay, just... I could... I could do better. I could... I could get newer. 
This tree is invited unlike the ivy. Okay, this tree is slightly uninvited too. If you um you take away the coffin bag. We take away the take away the coffins. You can see you can see the tree in its full buys you a flamethrower. <laughs> flamethrower is unfortunately illegal in Bunland. Do you need a new pair of solid gloves or boots? Um I I just go up in there and just go up on the roof in some of my older clothes and a pair of vans. <laughs> I, I don't think I need boots for going up onto my garage roof. I just need to be able to not slip off. <laughs> <The pain. laughs> um, this is a long running problem. I will be able to deal with it. I just um Hence the long running problem. Hence the long running problem. It's okay. Slow and steady, that's right. Thumbs up. Hmm. But I've um I've shown you shown you the proof. But it's big. It's like it's it's big. <laughs> it's Bigger than I am. Still. <laughs> Still. But we'll get it. You have shown us your ivy, now we have to turn it. No, that's okay. I think I'm just a little bit reluctant to buy buy new things. Um, because the old things I have, like, you know, they're not the best, but they still function. And um Could be worse. <laughs> the old things I have still work. Um, I feel that way about most things. The old things I have still work. Thumbs up. But for now, I must depart. So, I will crawl into my coffin. Crawl into my coffin covered with roots that are not ivy. They're just tree roots. I wouldn't want to throw money at an invading plant either. Well, I bought... I bought that weed killer. It's just that there's no... Um, there's no good opportunity to use it yet. Not even now, even with um, the part that I have cleared away. Because even if I killed it, I would still need to cut it back. And by that, I, I mean there's... Still a lot of cutting back that needs to be done, so... If Bun keeps using all things, her body parts will slowly become all things that stop. My body is in fact an old thing that barely works. I won't explain why, but it's like that. My, my dusty, my dusty Bun body, you guys should know. See, I've been, I've been sorted in the face, sorted in the face by, by a good friend, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no, thank you for, thank you for hanging out folks and playing Katala Shoujo with me. If you do get a chance to try the game, please do. It is free to play and really good. And if you don't mind, perhaps. I'll play some more, and we'll romance some more girls. Wink wink. Yo, very exciting. They're all cute, and they're all lovely. <laughs> you think you'll try it? If you guys do try Katawa Shoujo, please tell me who you play and who you like. And then I can add them to the list of <laughs> in the gonna <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That girl next. They're all very good. They're all... I like them a lot. Anyway. I 
I saw you being a Mishashi earlier. It half exists. But you'll... We'll get into that because we're on Shizune's route. Wish you all a good eve, as I say. Good night. Thank you for today. I realize at the end of the stream I sped through a bunch of not very good updates. But as things become more concrete, I'll do my best to share them with you too. Good night. Good night.